It's been about eight months since I started making my elderberry wine, so it's time to bottle now. I went out and bought a um, bunch of bottles, and they're all washed up, and then I bought a bottle sulfator. I got the corks and um, got the two carboys all ready to go. Everything's all settled to the bottom, so it's time to start bottling. Um, this sulfator thing that I bought really works good for these bottles. It... Um, allows me to do a good job of the sulfate and do it fairly quickly and um, then you just put them on the rack and let them sit there and drip out. Uh, then just a matter of taking the um, two batches of elderberry wine and make sure everything is uh, completely sterilized before you start. Anything that comes in contact with the liquid um, must be sterilized or sulfated or whatever you want to call it. And then it's just a matter of um, siphoning the, uh, the clear wine off of whatever has settled to the bottom of the carboy. Now, this has already been transferred from carboy to carboy once. And um, so this is the second siphoning off. And everything is really nice and clear at this point in time. Um, and I have the corker that I built a while ago all set up and ready to go now. And... Um, Everything's just about siphoned down into the bottling bucket. You can see I left the um, whatever was uh, not clear at the bottom. And then it's just a matter of setting the uh, bottling bucket up with the, uh, the little filling wand for the bottles. And starting to fill each of the bottles. Like I've said in the past, this is kind of a um, slow, boring job to get everything in the bottles and uh, get it put away so it can age, but it's got to be done. So it's just a matter of um, putting the bottle in place, pushing it up to turn on the valve, and um, just removing it just when it's uh, at the top edge. Um, first batch of wine came out uh, pretty good. It needs to age for a couple more years, but um it came out good um so here we are putting the first cork in just a matter of a, there's a little threaded piece that goes up to lock the bottle in place um, i was going to do something else but this is uh what i came up with and it's not the quickest option but it worked really good so it's a matter of just uh putting the bottle in screwing the base up dropping a cork in and then pushing down in uh inserting the cork it goes pretty quick when you're all set up and ready to do it it um it probably only takes about 10 minutes to do a case it does take a lot of force and you actually have to uh, squeeze the cork through a taper to make it small so it fits in the um bottle but this corker does a really great job at it and it makes it a real easy job to do okay so there we have the um first two cases bottled up and um i use the number nine corks which are a little bit bigger and it does make them a little harder to get in but uh and there is my sample to try now with all the uh bottles uh, with a cork in them i like to put these little uh, i guess they call them a pvc shrink capsule on them Kind of makes the bottle look a little bit nicer and um, keeps the cork a little cleaner, I think. So they're really easy to do. I just drop them on and I basically drop them on all the bottles at once. And then I have a um, industrial type heat gun that's made for um, like that shrink tubing that goes on wires that I use to um, just you heat them up with the uh, heat gun and they just shrink on there and they tighten themselves up pretty good and they come out and they give it a little bit of a um, professional look make it look a little better than just you know plain cork showing in a homemade wine and it does take a little bit bit of time to get them all to um shrink down and shrink good and tight but they only actually cost, I think, about $0.10 cents a piece when you buy them. So I feel like it's a worthwhile investment just to dress them up and make it look a little better. And they say that, uh, I guess you can shrink these things by 
uh, dip it in boiling water, they say, or maybe holding them over um, like a teapot that's steaming and using the uh, heat from the steam. I've never tried it, but if you don't have a heat gun, it may be something that you want to try. So there we have all the bottles all sealed up and um, just about ready for labeling now. So the next thing I do is I start on the second batch. Basically the exact same thing. You wash all your bottles, then you have to sulfate all the bottles, and you also have to sterilize, wash and sterilize all the siphon and bottling bucket again and get that ready to go and then just uh, repeat the process of um, just siphoning the clear wine out of the carboy into a bottle and bucket. Now the second batch of wine, I actually ran the bricks up real high on it when I um, I started and I used an extra 10 pounds of elderberries for the um, first fermentation. So it is a much bolder wine than the first one. It's got an extremely um, high, really elderberry taste, and it's got about a 15% alcohol content. So it's um, going to take a while, I think, for this one to mellow out. But it does have a good flavor to it, and I'm happy with the way this one came out, too. So it's just a matter of going back now and quirking up this uh, the next two cases that I got out of the second five-gallon carboy. And I think that the corking is the fun part. Um, I always take the corks and I dip them in a little bit of a um, sulfate solution just to make sure that they're sterilized when they go in. Now, everything that I've read so far has said that elderberry wine should sit for probably close to four years. Um, and the flavor on it will change before you consume it. But... Um, I don't think that there's any way that this is going to last four years because it's really, it really came out and it's got a great flavor now. From the uh, two five gallon carboys, I got uh, 48, well, I got one extra bottle actually, but I, um, I bought four cases of bottles and it turned out to be just the uh, perfect number for 10 gallons of wine after siphoning it off. So I'm happy about that, that I had enough bottles. Now, with everything in the bottles, the uh, next thing I wound up doing was uh, drawing up some uh, labels to make for each bottle of wine. I had two batches, and they were both completely different, so I made two different style labels. I use a gummed back uh, paper that you just wet that's made for um, making labels for wine and homebrew and beer and whatnot. And what you basically do is you print it out on the printer, and then you have to spray a couple coats of polyurethane varnish on it so that the printer ink doesn't run. And you let that dry, you cut it out, and then you just take a damp sponge and you hit the backing of it to activate the adhesive and just carefully put them on and um, wipe them and, and, you know, kind of try to dry them off a little bit and whatnot. And they work really great. And the good thing about it is they're water-soluble. The adhesive is water-soluble. So um, when you're done with the bottle and you want to clean it up for reuse, you just wet that label and you soak it a little bit. And the label actually peels right off, unlike the bottles from, or unlike the labels that they use on commercial bottles. So I've just about got the labels on my um, first batch of wine. And that one's a much lower alcohol content. That's only about 8%. And that's a really nice um, dry sipping wine. Um, and then I went back and I put the labels on the, um, the second batch, which is a much higher alcohol content and a much bolder wine. So there you can see everything's pretty much done. Uh, I just ran out of the shrink caps and i have to run out and pick up some uh of the caps for the uh, second batch but otherwise i'm pretty happy with the way it came out and now it's just a matter of uh waiting about four years for it to age haha <laughs> thanks for watching please subscribe